Hey guys, this is uh, Kevin with uh, TechMeow TV. Uh, welcome to another tutorial video. Uh, last tutorial video, I showed you how to search for a value in a game with Cheat Engine and how to write to that memory address with Cheat Engine. Today, I'm going to get a little more advanced. We're going to use C to to write to the memory address. So we're going to find the memory address in Cheat Engine and we're going to write to it in C++. Uh, what we're going to use today, uh, Diablo 3 servers are in maintenance right now. So we're going to use StarCraft 2 and uh, we're going to use Cheat Engine 6.1 and we're going to be in a Windows 7 64 bin environment. Alright, so first of all I've got my StarCraft 2 here. I'm going to just continue a campaign and I've got my cheat engine here and I'm going to actually want to clear this up a little bit alright let me open the StarCraft 2 process Start open StarCraft 2 process and cheat engine so I can uh, get ready for my scan we're going to be scanning for 4 bytes uh, value type alright it would be the, just the same if you chose uh, single player uh, and played against artificial intelligence. You would follow the same process that we're doing today. It's just that for some reason single player is not working today. Maybe they're doing maintenance on that. So we're going to pause this game and we're going to first we're going to want to modify our minerals. So let's um, let's do a search for 400 minerals. Okay. Now let's have a SCV gather some minerals. Bad news. Ah, you scared me. Go ahead. What's going on? All right. So now we're going to do our next search. 410. Since we have 410. 10. All right. So we've got addresses here, and you see some are green and some are black. What that means is these green ones are static. Okay. If I close the StarCraft 2 game down completely. I bring the game back up and I start campaign over again. These addresses will still hold the value for the minerals in the game. Okay, that's a good thing. We 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 like to see the green in Cheat Engine. Okay, these dynamic values, these addresses, when I close down and open StarCraft 2, could hold completely different data that I won't need. Okay, and I'll go into a later tutorial how to use how how to still utilize these. Um, still useful um, but I'll go over that in a later video uh, oh, looks like I need to plug in my power source one second, my laptop's gonna die So, what was I? So, we're going to use one of these, and let's just test to make sure these are valid. Let's change this number to 420. Okay, you see here? Minerals just change. Let's do it again. 430. See here? Minerals just change. So, we're going to use this address right here. This is the address we wanted. So it's time to start coding some C++. Let's start a new Windows console program. Windows 32 console application. We're going to call this SC2min. Okay? For minerals. Alright, finish. So we've got our blank template here. And we've got our main function. Alright. At the bottom of this, just throw a sin dot, sin dot get, or else every time we test our window is going to uh, close. Every time we run the application, it's going to close immediately. We're not going to be able to see any output. So throw that in there. I'm going to pull up a reference here for because I coded it earlier, but I'm still going to go over everything with you. So there's some includes we need. First, we need the Windows header file for all right, Windows API calls. I'm gonna need uh, IO stream. Okay. 
and we're going to need to use namespace std. Okay. All right. Now we're ready. So the first thing we're going to want to do is find our StarCraft 2 window and make sure that StarCraft 2 is running. But first we're going to define some uh, variables we're going to use. So hwnd type sc2 window. So we're going to call it equals we're going to run a function find window. Our class is going to be 0 and our window name is going to be StarCraft 2. All right. And we're going to need a handle because we're going to need to open a process. Open the process. We're going to need the process ID. We're going to store that there. We're going to need the current amount of minerals. We're going to store that there. We're going to need more minerals. So we're going to we're going to grab 10,000. All right. So that's that's our variables we're going to use throughout uh, the rest of the code. So first we're going to see if uh, StarCraft 2 is open. If sc2 window. Okay. SC2 window is our variable here. We ran a find window function. So if it returns a zero, we're gonna throw an error. So console out. Uh, we'll do error just like the other one, the reference here. Error zero zero one. Cannot find StarCraft two. Alright. Throw some line breaks in there. Alright. We're gonna throw an else on here because or else we found the window and we want that so if we found the window then we want to get the process ID get window thread process ID that's the function we're gonna run we're gonna throw it two arguments our sc2 window and we're gonna output to our variable of PID okay so then we're gonna output to the user found sc2 process okay we're going to output the PID number and we're going to throw some line breaks in there. Alright. So let's just test this. Let's see if it finds the correct PID number. Let's open our test manager. And if you don't have the PID column, you'll add it by going view, select columns, and you'll want to check PID. And we see here SC2. Where is it? StarCraft 2 is running at 6956. So let's run our app and see if it finds the right PID. 6956. So it's working. Found StarCraft 2 process. Alright, let's continue coding. Alright. We're going to set up our process handler. Okay. H process equals. We're going to run the open process function. And our desired access is all access. We don't want to inherit any handle. False and we want to use our process ID we just found okay if this fails we need to know if that fails we're gonna throw another error console out error 002 cannot open process line break line break alright alright if it succeeded that's good that's what we want else Okay, scroll down my reference here. Alright, or else we want to output to the user. Console out. Process opened. Yay, line break, line break. Whoops, sorry. Taking a little fast here. Alright, process was open. Okay, now we're ready to start reading memory. Let's read. Alright, so we're going to run if read process memory that's the function we want to run we want to see if it if it works or it doesn't work okay uh, yeah. if read process memory all right we're going to use our process handler use a void type and here's where we put in our our base memory address that we want to read from which i got here which is the same because it's a static so we can just do uh, all right, 0x 
zero two six a nine four four eight. That's our memory address we want to read from. Okay, we want to put it into a void type uh, into uh, our minerals variable up here that we declared. We want to put it there, the value. And let me just get a better view here. Okay. The next argument is the size. We're going to do size of minerals. And the last argument, we're going to null. Okay. If that fails, we want to console out to the user. Error 0 3. Cannot failed to read memory. Line break, line break. Okay. If that succeeds, else, if it succeeds, we want to output the value. See out. Value found. Okay. And our minerals. And then some line breaks. Okay. So we're going to output that. And let me just throw down here, since we're testing and we're actually opening a process, we want to close that process. Close, handle, H process. Okay. You're going to want to close a process if you're going to open one. So let's test it out. Let's see what it finds. Oh, build error. That's okay. That's a good thing. Missing, uh, missing a semicolon before comma. Okay. Um, now we'll be there. Line 60. Oh, it would help if I had my line numbers on. Oh, we got a comma here. Not sure how that got there. Let's see. Let's run it. Let's see what we have. Oh, you found 430. What do you know? That is the value that we currently have. So it's reading fine. Let's just let's just output here so you have good notes. Um, closed process. Okay. All right. So we found the value that succeeded. Now we want to write to that memory space. So if now we're going to use the function write process memory. Okay, use our process handler, void type, same address we want to write to, 026A9448, okay, and we want to write the value of more minerals, and we have to put the size of more minerals, okay, and we're going to null the last variable, alright, if that fails. We're going to output to the console error 004 fail to write memory line break. If it succeeded, if it succeeded, then we're going to output memory written line break. All right. So Let's actually change what we're going to write. Let's just change it to 1,000, okay? So change this variable at the beginning, more minerals, to 1,000, okay? Right now in the game we have 430. So if this works, we should have 1,430. So let's run the application. Memory written. Actually, we shouldn't have 1,430 because we're not incrementing. We're just overwriting. So We've got a thousand minerals now. So memory was written successfully. So that's a good thing. Let's provide more info to the uh, to the end user. Okay. Let's provide the new value. Alright. <clears throat> let's let's read it again. We're gonna read the process memory. Same handle. Void type. Same address. We're going to read the minerals, size of minerals. We're going to null. And we 
don't need to there. Alright. process memory. Oh, <laughs> I must be tired. Reprocess memory. Okay. So now it stores the new value. Right now, put to the user new value, new value. minerals line breaks. All right. So let's actually um, let's up it to two thousand. See the change. All right, let's run it. So it found a value of 1,000, which is what we had. It wrote, overwrote that with a new value, 2,000. You can see here. Okay, cool. Very good. All right. So today I've shown you couple of good functions here. Uh, one being find window. Find window. Find save window. Okay. Um, I've shown you how to actually error out when something fails. Okay. That's good stuff. I showed you get window thread process ID to find process ID. Uh, I've shown you open process. process. Okay, I've shown you read process memory to read a memory value that's currently uh, in your memory. I've shown you write process memory. Process memory to overwrite a value. I've also shown you how to output in the console see how output. Um, shown you how to uh, create some variables and that's all very useful and it's going to go into the next tutorial video where instead of just overwriting we're going to increment and we're probably going to use a hot key and we're going to make a GUI for our trainer so I've shown you how to make a trainer for a single player game to increase your, your minerals or your gold, whatever you want to uh, increase in the game. Uh, and it's usable. I'll show you here. All that money is usable. Good job, huh? You can see here. Oh. Yeah. That Go ahead. So, I uh, hope you learned some good stuff today. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, until next time, Kevin with uh, Tech TV signing out. Tech Me Out TV, sorry, signing out.